Hey friends, welcome back to the YouTube channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Oleg and this is Mr. Bond, one sec. This is one and only Mr. Bond and we talk about watches on this YouTube channel. So about a year ago, I bought this watch right here. That's the Omega Speedmaster Automatic. This has been a grail watch of mine for a really long time. After spending about a year with this watch, I feel like I know it pretty well. So in today's video, I wanted to list five things that you should know about this watch before you buy one. Before we get started, I just want to grab a quick coffee, so give me five. So the five things you should know about Speedmaster Automatic. Most of the things will apply to Speedmaster Professional as well, but some things will only apply to the Speedmaster Automatic. So let's get started with the first thing you should know, that the watch for the most part has vintage type finishes. So what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, the clasp is just a press metal clasp, a bit disappointing for a watch in this price category. They're around $2,000 right now, about $1,800 if you get lucky. It's not the most expensive watch on the market, but it's not cheap either. And at that price point, you would expect an engineered clasp. Unfortunately here, it's a friction held in place press metal clasp. It also only has snap-in case back, so the case back is not a screw-down case back. Again, kind of disappointing for watching this price point. And lastly, it only has an acrylic crystal, which is a scratch magnet. Yes, acrylic crystals are fairly easy to buff out if you get any scratches, but it's still not as durable as a sapphire crystal. And once again, in this price category, a lot of people would expect a sapphire crystal on the watch. Number two, the size. Most people know that this watch is smaller than the Speedmaster Professional, Speedmaster Professional being 42 millimeters, this watch being about 39 millimeters in diameter. It also has a short lock to lock distance, about 45 millimeters from one lock to another. However, the dimension of the watch that I want to emphasize is the size of its metal bracelet. It's 18 millimeters lock opening and the bracelet is 18 millimeters all around. It doesn't taper at all. 18 millimeters for some larger wrists might look a little bit too small. I do wish that this watch had 20 millimeter lug width. That would make it easier to find straps for it. It's a great strap monster, this watch. You can wear it on NATO straps, you can wear it on leather straps. Unfortunately, 18 millimeter NATO and leather straps aren't as common. And also, in my opinion, just don't look as good as 20 millimeters. Also, you have to keep in mind that most of these watches will be sold on the resale market, as the watches, of course, discontinued. And on the resale market, a lot of them do come from Japan for one reason or another. I don't know why, but if you look on eBay, if you look on Chrono24, you can see that a lot of sellers do sell them from Japan. And over the years, the owners or the sellers of the watch have lost some of the links on the bracelet. And it's very important because a lot of them, if you read the description of the listing, will say that the strap is 16 centimeters or 17 centimeters. So keep that in mind. Read the description very carefully. See if all the links are there for the bracelet, especially if you have larger wrists. But even if you don't, it's just good to have for the resale value. So make sure that all the links are included when you buy one of these watches. And if you're unsure whether the links are included or not, just ask the seller. Most of the time, they'll be happy to answer. Number three, the servicing costs. This watch is not easy to service and it's not cheap to service. I've gotten quotes anywhere between 400 up to 600 US dollars for a service. They have to open up and see how much of a servicing actually needs to be done. It has a module chronograph movement, which means that it basically has a regular automatic movement. And then they added a chronograph module on top of that. That's why the chronograph pushers are sitting slightly above the crown if you look at it from a side profile. From my understanding, modular movements aren't that easy to service and not every watchmaker will even attempt to service one of these watches. That's why the cost of servicing is higher. 
Now about $500 for a service of this watch is quite expensive, especially if you consider the price of this watch around 2000 US dollars. For double that, you can buy Omega Speedmaster Professional, about $4,000, and the servicing costs for that watch aren't actually all that much cheaper. However, if you compare it price versus the servicing costs, that's a lot more reasonable. $4,000 watch, pay $400 or $500 for a service, versus a $2,000 watch, pay $500 or $400 for a service. So keep that in mind if you're looking for one of these watches. And chances are, because you're gonna be buying a used watch, it will need a service at some point during your ownership. Number four, this bezel is a scratch and dings magnet. Because of the way this watch is designed, the bezel kind of protrudes above the case and extends outwards. It's very easy to ding this bezel. I've seen countless listings of Omega Speedmaster automatics as well as professionals with dinged up, beat up bezels. So when you buy one of these watches, the very first thing you want to look out for are the scratches and dings on the bezel. I wore this watch on an airplane, big mistake. It's not a very tough watch, it's quite fragile. So I wouldn't recommend this watch for activities like taking it on an airplane or majority of sporting activities. Of course, only 50 meters of water resistance, so you can't do any water activities in this watch. It's quite fragile, especially that bezel. It's something you should know and definitely something you need to watch out for when you're looking at buying one of these watches. And number five, you don't have to worry about fakes too much. Luxury watches, just like all luxury goods, are being faked quite often. Whenever you buy one online, and even in person, you have to always watch out for fakes, especially with popular brands like Omega, Tudor, and of course, Rolex. However, Omega Speedmaster Automatics and Professionals aren't faked that often because they're just too difficult to fake and the fakes are very obvious. I've come across a few fakes here and there, but they are very obviously fake. Uh, these watches aren't cheap to fake either because you have to have that chronograph movement. Automatic chronograph movements themselves aren't that cheap. So faking one of these watches doesn't leave much margin for profit. People that fake watches rather fake something that's much easier to fake, like a Rolex Submariner, for example. So you don't really have to worry about fakes, but you do have to worry about Franken watches. Basically, a Franken watch is a watch that has been assembled from different parts from different watches. So for example, a dial from one watch, hands from another watch, balance wheel from a third watch, uh, rotor from a fourth watch, and so on and so on. Now these are much more difficult to spot unless you are a uh, very seasoned watch collector or a watchmaker. That's why I always recommend if you're buying one of these watches in person, meet at a watchmaker's that you trust or meet at Omega store so they can make sure that you're buying a real deal. If you're buying from online, make sure that they have some kind of a return policy. I would also film the unboxing experience of the watch and the same day as you get it, take it to a watchmaker, make sure that it's a real deal and it's not a Franken watch. So you don't really have to worry about fake watches, but you do have to worry about Franken watches. So those were the five things that you should know about Omega Speedmaster Automatic before you buy one. I appreciate you watching this video until the end. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. We upload new videos every week. And leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what other things I missed about this watch. If you own one especially, or maybe you had one in the past, I'm sure I left out some things. And maybe somebody else who's looking for one of these watches will look in the comment section and learn something new. My wristwatch check for the day is Omega Speedmaster Automatic. I did a full review of this watch. That video can be found on the YouTube channel. I will also leave it linked in the description below. Also in the description below, there are two other links. The first link is a secret link. Have a look if you're curious. The second link is a link to bondnatostraps.com. If you're looking for a great quality NATO strap and want to support this YouTube channel at the same time, buying one of these NATO straps is a great way to do so. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're staying safe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.